Hey, how's it going guys, Neve here. And over the past few years, I've had the luxury and the absolute pleasure to meet tons of seven, eight figure, uh, nine figure entrepreneurs and you know, really learn a lot from them, as well as myself being able to work with tons of students and being able to help them as well. And over the past few years, I've really noticed that you know, most of the successful people in general have a lot of key traits that they all share. And hopefully I'll be able to point those out for you here. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about generic things like working hard or being passionate about what you're doing, uh, being an action taker, like all that kind of stuff, because obviously those things are super important, but I don't wanna make this video completely, you know, just a regurgitation of what's out there online already. These are the 10 traits and, you know, the ones that you probably don't know, maybe some of them you do, I'm sure you do know some of them, but I'm sure some of them are gonna be quite eye-opening for you, uh, so stick around for this one because I think it's gonna bring you a lot of value. So number one, and a lot of successful people do this, is they go out to try to fix pain points that other people have. They try to serve others first and know that they're gonna get you know, paid on the back end of that. A lot of people go into businesses nowadays, especially people who are unsuccessful, have never had any success in the past, uh, going in it solely to make money for themselves and only looking for how they can take advantage of the situation or how they can get a cut of whatever's happening. When in reality, successful people, and especially a lot of my successful students, they go about it a different way. You, go, you have to go about it trying to solve people's problems, trying to serve them first, make an amazing product or solving a difficult problem, and obviously on the back end, that's when you get paid. But don't worry about the payment because if you solve a problem, you will get paid. The second trait is to focus on one specific thing. So a lot of people nowadays try to have a million side hustles, try to have their full-time job, try to start a business, and what ends up happening is that you spread yourself far too thin. Obviously, these are some big examples, but if we're talking about like Jeff Bezos, uh, Bill Gates, all these people, you know, maybe now they have multiple things that they're doing, but even Jeff Bezos, like the richest man in the world, has, you know, Amazon, he has uh, Blue Origin, maybe some other stuff, you know, but it all started with Amazon, and I think for 20 years, all he did was Amazon. And so with anything, you wanna find what your path is, find what your lane is, and just stay and keep going down that road. There's gonna to be tons of opportunity, especially when you start to get more successful to spread yourself thin. And I've really fallen for that before in the past too, where you realize that you know there are ways of making money and they're everywhere once your eyes open. You realize there's opportunity everywhere. But you have to make sure that you continue down your lane. Like right now, right? There's tons of opportunity in crypto and Bitcoin and all that kind of stuff. But at this point, what I realized, and I've made mistakes in the past in terms of crypto and stuff, but what I've realized at this point is that the most important thing is for me to have like blinders on like a horse and focus on one direction. I actually internalized a lot of this from someone called Sam Ovens on YouTube. He doesn't make many videos anymore, but uh, basically I'll put a, a graphic here, but you'll see that there's like a circle and from that circle, there's many lines. Instead of having your circle with a whole lot of little lines around it, uh, what you can do is focus all of those on one line, you'll have a much longer line that gets a lot further. And that's kind of the same thing in business. A lot of people get the most successful, they focus in one thing and they stay in their lane and they don't try to be distracted until they've seen some serious success. After you have a ton of success and you know what you're doing, go ahead and diversify it, you know, but when you're first trying to build your wealth, you usually stick to one avenue. The third habit is pretty simple, but it's very important, which is to try to improve slightly every single day. There was a story about like, uh, you know, a UK cycling team that went from like being like last to winning like all the tournaments. I don't remember exactly what it is, but basically what they did is they focused on little things every single day. They focused on their sleep, they focused on their bikes, they focused on their training, they focused on doing everything around the athlete and optimizing everything in your life. So you can become a better person, a better partner, a better business owner, better, um, you know, if you're an employee, better employee, uh, just like better boss. Like every single aspect of your life you can improve on slightly. And 1% changes, you know, compound you know, a lot in the course of a year or two years or five years or even 10 years. So focus on the small changes that really make a, a big difference in the long run. The fourth trait is not having an ego. And uh, obviously there's a lot of successful people that do have egos, but their success doesn't last very long or it's really after a while that they develop these egos. Uh, but I think it's very important to keep your ego in check. And what I mean by that is never thinking of like you're the smartest person in the room or that you have, uh, you're so much better than anyone else or any of that kind of stuff. Because the truth is, 
if you go into a room with someone or you know people, no matter how successful you are, there's so many things still that you can learn from the other person. It doesn't have to be in business, doesn't have to be in anything else, but there's things that you can learn from other people. And if you walk into the room and you think you're the hottest shit or the smartest person in the room, well, most likely than not, you're probably one of the stupidest people in that room because you don't see the opportunity to learn from others, keeping your ego in check and understanding that no matter how successful you are, you can learn stuff. And always keeping that beginner's mentality. Uh, and that's something that I try to, you know, keep with myself as well. You know, I'm never gonna tell you that I know everything. I'm never gonna tell you that I'm the smartest person or, or the best at something because I truly believe there's always somebody better. There's always somebody you can learn from. And so that's why you gotta continue learning and keep your ego in check no matter how successful you get. Number five, and an incredibly important one, which is taking extreme ownership of a situation. I got that kind of like words extreme ownership from the book Extreme Ownership, but truthfully, I didn't even read that book because I tried to read it. I didn't like it too much, but I do believe in the message behind that book. I've watched podcasts and stuff like that from, from Jocko himself. And I do believe in the message, which is you have to take extreme ownership of any situation. You're the reason you are where you are. You're the only person that's gonna pull you out from where you are. and you have to, for any failures and for any successes, you have to believe that you're the reason for those. You know, you're the reason for your successes, but you're also the reason for your failures. Everything is in your hands. And the important thing is not to realize this while everything is good. If you're doing well and you're like, oh, this is amazing. When things are bad, understanding that when you get emotional, when there's like an emotionally charged moment, I'm not talking about just business, but in life. If you have an emotionally charged moment and then in an emotionally charged moment, you you go and you start to blame other people for certain things and that's not the case. It always comes back to you. It's always you, especially in, those, in the moments where you're emotionally charged, you need to be able to understand that you're the reason for your faults, you're the reason for the mistakes, you're the reason for any failures. And I think that a lot of extremely, extremely successful people really do believe that even in those emotionally charged states. So that's number five, just really take ownership for where you are and understand that you're the only one that's gonna get you to where you wanna go. Number six, very simple one, but it's reading. You've got to be reading. And I'm not gonna sit here like some saint tell you that I read you know, a book a day or a book a week. Like sometimes I'm a slacker too when it comes to that because sometimes I just can't seem to sit down and to read, even though when I actually do it, I love reading, you know? And I love going through the books and I love you know, learning from other people who are much, much, much smarter than me. And that's obviously one of the reasons you wanna do that because these books have the knowledge, especially when you do nonfiction books, they have the knowledge of someone's entire life usually. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, knowledge. In one like 300 page book or 200 page book. And it's like, they've condensed everything that they knew, everything that they know into that book. And it's almost stupid to not read those. It's the whole the concept where you think that you you're, you're, you're too smart for those, those books or you're too, you know enough that you don't need to read from people who are magnitudes more successful than you, right? And I'm not gonna sit here and say, again, like I said, that I'm the best reader, I read all the time, but I truly enjoy when I do it and I do truly believe that that's one of the biggest things to success is understanding that you need to read, but not reading complete bullshit, reading, first analyzing about your life and then reading about things that you feel you need help with. Whether that be, if you feel that, you know, if you're, you know, you're, you're like uh, not having good sales at work, let's say you're a salesman, going out and reading sales books. If you are about to, you know, start like uh, negotiations for selling your business or for buying a home or for whatever, or reading negotiations books. If you are just trying to have better interpersonal skills with your friends or, or, or coworkers or whatever, you know, reading those kind of books. If you're trying to hire a team, reading books about how to hire and make the best teams. And so I think that's super important is to understand and analyze where you are and what you need, and then reading books about those things. And again, the most successful people in the world do this. So why would you not? What makes you better than the most successful people who read books every single day? If they do it, then what excuse you have? You know, if Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and all these people read books, and they're, you know, have billion dollar companies that they're working on 24 seven and they make time for it then, you know, how can you make time for it? Also, if you truly, for some reason, don't have time, you can always listen to audiobooks. Uh, and that's what I did, you know, a lot in the past as well. Time, times where I felt like I didn't have enough time, which again was probably an over-exaggeration that I didn't have time, I would re listen to audiobooks. So there's really no excuse not to get out there and start reading. Number seven is problem solving. 
And this is a funny one because this is actually a skill that I think that people, a lot of people don't have, and it's a super important one, is being able, and it sounds, it sounds weird, but it's like to, to solve problems on your own. A lot of people when they fail or, or when there's things that like start to get more difficult, they cannot just figure it out. And I know it's probably sometimes easier said than done, but sometimes you need to be able to build that skill to just figure it out, just problem solve. If someone or something happened to your business, just go search it up online and figure it out yourself. Figure it out yourself, okay? You're big boys. A lot of people just go run to someone and try to get help and try to get someone to do it for them. And that's a super, super important trait and skill to have as an entrepreneur and especially as a successful one. People who are ready and, and, and learn the skill of just problem solving. It sounds simple, but it's, it's a huge one. And now we'll get to the latter parts of this list. And those of you who stuck around to hear, thanks so much. Uh, hit the like button if you're enjoying anything so far, got any value from this, it really means a lot. Uh, but we're gonna get a little deep. So number eight, which is not being afraid to fail. And that might not be like the most accurate thing to say because I think anybody and everybody is at some you know level inside them kind of afraid to fail. No one wants to fail. But the truth is the people who are really successful, the traits that they have is that they are, they do a pros and cons list in their head or on paper and they understand like what is the worst that can possibly happen if I do fail in this venture, like let's say if you're launching a product or something like that, like if I have to invest five or $10,000, like what's the worst that's gonna happen? They figure that out and if it's not that bad, they go ahead and do it. Because again, the worst that's gonna happen is you lose some money, you have to go again and you have to figure it out. And the truth is I know people in my personal life who have told me that they've, you know, they're older and they've told me like, hey, like I've never failed. So it's very, very scary for me to fail uh, because you know, my whole life uh, I've just been, you know, like, like I've never failed. And I say in my head, I mean, obviously I didn't say this, but in my head, that's a huge, massive sign of an underachiever, a massive sign of an underachiever because you cannot succeed without having any failure. You cannot go through life and be a successful person without failing and, and going through failure. Because the truth is even with myself and with all the other successful people that you see, they've gone through probably more failure than you've even tried, than even things that you've tried, they have they failed more. So of course they see a lot of success because your success is proportionate to your failure. So the more failure, the more success. That's just the way that it works. It's the way that life is. So don't be afraid to fail. It's gonna happen eventually. Um, you know, the more failures, the faster, the better. Number nine is persistence. And this is probably one of my favorite uh, kind of themes is to understand that to be successful in anything, you need to be persistent. You need to understand in in the so, in your soul that you will be successful, no matter what. That it's only a matter of time from now, right? Let's say, let's say your life is on a timeline. You're here, no matter what. That you know, when you're here, like at some point in your timeline, you will be successful. And the only thing that's the difference keeping you from being successful now is just the time in between. And I believe you can shorten the time or lengthen the time based on you know the things that you do and and kind of like. Your, your kind of business decisions. But for me, like for example, for me, I know I have my goals and I know that no matter what they are, it's only a matter of time from between where I am now and where I wanna go, right, and you know, to grow. And the same thing needs to be with you. It's about being persistent and understanding that through failures, through successes, you just have to keep pushing. And sometimes I get students who come to me and say like, hey, like my business is not doing so well. Um, I don't know what to do. Like when will I see success? And I say like, how long have you actually been working on your business? You know, a lot of times, it's six months, eight months, a year, maybe two years at most. And I say, well, listen, like if I told you, let, let me kind of put like a theory or not a theory of a, or a, a scenario in your, in your head and kind of give you a scenario. If I told you that, you know, for the next, let's say 10 years, you have to just continue working on your business and continue working on business and continue to fail and maybe not make any money and, um, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, just barely make it by, you know, don't, don't make any money. But 10 years from now on the dot, you know, you'll have a seven or eight figure business, right? Even seven figure, let's say per year business. And then I asked them, would you still do that? Would you work for 10 years, not having any success, but in 10 years from now having a business, you know, worth that makes seven, you know, seven figures a year. And without fail, literally every person, every student, every, literally every person I've ever asked that to says, yes, they would, struggle for 10 years and then have a successful business. So then I tell them, so, okay, so if you've only done it for eight months or one year, then you have nine years to go until you get that. So just treat your life as if you have nine years that you're just gonna have to suffer through 
to get to the business that you want. And if you said it's worth it, then go do it. And the reality is a lot of the time, if you keep to work, you know, working on that, it'll take you a lot less than nine or 10 years to get there. You just need to keep persisting, keep working hard. And so that's kind of like, uh, you know, ask yourself, I guess, leave in the comment, like that, if, if anyone disagrees with me, leave me in the comments if you wouldn't take 10 years for, you know, a multi or seven figure business per year. Uh, most people will say yes, I think. And number 10, which is a very hard one, but it's, it's important as well, is to truly believe that you, that you can do it. Because at some points when I was starting off, I didn't really believe that it was possible for me. I, I mean, I knew I could do it, but there were still doubts. And so you really have to believe that it's possible for you to really see success. And it can get very challenging because even for myself and my story, I had a lot of naysayers and a lot of people who kind of made you feel like, doubt the process, doubt that this stuff works. And I know that uh, a lot of the times those naysayers, uh, the people who, you know, kind of bring you down and kind of like crabs in a bucket, you know, they kind of try to keep you down. And um, they don't do it out of like most of them, especially, you know, family and friends who a lot of the times are those naysayers, unfortunately. Um, you know, they don't do it on purpose, they do it out of love because they want to protect you. And going into business or going into doing your own things is, it's, you know, perceived as very risky, which again, that's a whole different topic we can get into, I don't believe that, but uh, it's perceived as very risky. And so they, they try to keep you down, they try to, uh, you know, have you go down the path that they believe is the most, you know, will give you the most success. Um, and in my case, it was a lot of my parents um, who would, you know, want me to go to school in, in like a particular program that I was going to, I was going to, uh, you know, be a physiotherapist, um, you know, become part of the family business because they, they have like a clinic and stuff like that. And so for me, that sounded great, you know, because, you know, you can work in the business, you can make good money, but I, I truly knew that I never wanted to do that. And, um, you know, my parents would, would, uh, would um, just be naysayers basically, I'm not gonna get too into it, but it was, it was rough and it was, it was hard, but sometimes you need to realize that your dreams are the ones that, that matter, right? Like they aren't the ones that are gonna have to live your life. You're the one that's gonna have to live with your decisions for the rest of your life. So make sure that you believe in what, in, in that you deserve the success and believe that you can do it. And then just forget about all the naysayers, forget about anyone else, surround yourself with people who are also like-minded and that's gonna help you a lot. That's pretty much it. Those are the 10 traits that after, you know, mentoring hundreds of students, after my own experiences and meeting, you know, other, tons of other people talking with them about this stuff. These are all different traits that, you know, they have, they possess. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can take some of those lessons, implement them into your own life. If you like the video, again, leave a like. It really, really helps the channel. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.